Hey guys, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up squad? All right, twins, twin flames, weekly, yeah. How is everybody doing? Yeah, doing well, doing well. Still getting through these energies from the full moon and that eclipse. I mean, that's gonna be going on for like the next six months. Um, I have been going through a moment or a period where I can feel sometimes, like I can feel some of that residual stuff come up. It's gonna happen. <laughs> um, nothing, none of these energies just like stop and that's it. They still kind of linger a little bit. It takes some time to move through them, to really, really release them and get through them and all that stuff. So if you're still dealing with some of that stuff, I feel for you. <laughs> it's okay. Um, ultimately, it's a good thing because you're, this is giving you a moment to really purge some stuff, really get through some things. Yeah. Uh, just a few things I want to talk about before we get into the actual cards. First, um, we can, uh, I'm sorry, uh, private readings are officially open, yeah? If you would like to do a private reading with me, you are more than welcome to check out the description box below. That has my email address and a description of the readings that I'm currently offering. Uh, go through those, read them, see if there's something that resonates with you, that fits with you. If not, you're more than welcome to just email me and tell me a little bit about your situation and then I'll help you come up with a solution as to which reading would work best for you. Yeah. Um, I am right after I do this reading, I'm going to be doing the uh, spiritual check-in mission or I'm sorry, spiritual check-in reading. So last week I asked you guys to let me know which one you wanted, if it was to be spiritual mission or if it was to be an ascension check-in. The, the, the majority, the, the winner there, uh, um, community choice, is Ascension. However, um, I was thinking about it and I was like, okay, well, how would I do it? I was just, you know, thinking about it logically, trying to map it out in my head. And there were a few of you that said that you wanted a spiritual mission check-in. And I really felt like, even though most of you had been requesting the Ascension, I still felt feel like the spiritual mission is necessary, would be beneficial, okay, would be a good thing for us to talk about. So, sorry, I've got a hair. <laughs> so, with that said, what I plan on doing is a combination of both. So I'm going to be doing a an ascension check-in versus the mission, okay? So it is going to be in the mirror format, just like this Twin Flame reading. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one deck to symbolize the ascension process, where we are in that. And then I'm going to use the other deck to, to see how the ascension is mirroring the mission and also where we are in the mission. Yeah. So that's what's going up. Uh, that's what I'm doing right after I do this one. So you can expect to see that uploaded. Uh, you might, I might just like post them all together or I'll post this one. And then once the, the mission versus, or Ascension versus Missing is done, I'll post that, whatever, but look for it, okay? All right, so other than that, um, I will be at Om Shanti this coming Monday and subsequent Mondays after this, unless further, unless like stated specifically, but I will be at Om Shanti on Monday from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. Om Shanti is in Manhattan in the East Village on 14th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. You are more than welcome to check the website. The uh, web address is in the description box below. From there, you can get their phone number, and if you'd like to book a reading in advance, you're more than welcome to do that. Or you can just walk in whenever you have time, and I'll be there, yeah? Um, 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 okay. Last thing, are we all claiming our sovereignty? Yes, continuing to do so. That is something that we need to do on a daily basis basis, as well as meditating, yeah? I was hearing twice a day. Um, you can meditate as long as you want, for as many, as many times as you want. Um, Spirit is recommending at least when you wake up, excuse me, when you wake up in the morning or when you go to bed at night or both. Um, actually, I've noticed that there are days where like I'll get up, when I wake up, I'll just sit up in my bed and I'll meditate for a little bit. And it actually helps me wake up a little bit, like which is which is weird because a lot of the time some people, find, well, at least me especially, when I started meditating, first started meditating, um, it would kind of make me sleepy and put me to sleep. But um, 
you know, if you like, as you're waking up, if you're like focusing on your breath and like focusing on your body and all that, that helps to bring your conscious mind to the forefront from that sleepy state. Um, so you can do that. I don't recommend laying down, especially if you're trying to wake up because that just may put you back to sleep. Now, if you want, if you're going to meditate before sleep, definitely lay down. That will definitely help you and it could help you fall asleep. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's it. Let's get into the cards. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome thoughts. So as usual, we've got a mirror reading here. Um, using two decks, one to symbolize the Divine Masculine, the other to symbolize the Divine Feminine. i just shift my crystals around here. Excellent, excellent. Oh, I just realized I don't have my clear quartz. Huh. What do I do with it? Maybe it's still in my pants pocket. Hold on. Hold on. Gotta get my, gotta get my quartz here. Where are you, quartzy? Oh, no. There you are. Sweet. Excellent. All right, guys, so let's settle in. Let's all connect and see what sp messages Spirit has for us for this week. Hey, Spirit, please make me a clear channel for the Twin Flame Collective. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. Please give us an accurate representation of the energies of the Divine Masculine, represented by the deck on the left, and the energies of the Divine Feminine, represented by the deck on the right. And please show us how they are interacting with each other and or mirroring each other as individuals and also as Divine Twin Flames. Thank you, Spirit. Wow. All right, I'm starting with the Divine Masculine deck. Now, guys, keep in mind, I have said this before, um, I feel like I need to say it now. There may be some new viewers here that are not, not necessarily familiar with my mirror readings, but these mirror readings are in with intentions of understanding not only what's going on with your Divine Masculine or your Divine Feminine in the physical world as individuals, but also to get a greater understanding of the, of what's going on between the energies of Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine within each of us, because we all have both energies. Yes? Excellent. Divine Masculine. Oh, goodness. Oh, oh, okay. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> Divine Masculine, shuffling for you right now. How is everything? How is everything? I'm seeing orange. I'm seeing white. Um, you, there's a lot of emotional purging and emotional healing happening for you right now, Divine Masculine. Um, and there's purity coming through. It's like your emotions, your emotional body, your sacral chakra, these are all in the process of being purified because I'm seeing orange and I'm also seeing white. And I'm hearing wiping the slate clean. Now, <laughs> yeah, this is not an easy process because I just saw the tower in my head. So you might be going through even more tower moments. Um, and I'm feeling like they may be picking up um, in succession, like one after another. Boom, boom, boom. You're just getting slammed left and right. Welcome to spiritual ascension and spiritual awakening, <laughs> awakening my friends. Yeah, A friend of mine recently, like over this past week, he sent me a meme on Facebook that says what spiritual awakening, what, yeah, what people think spiritual awakening looks like, and it was the sun, and versus what spiritual awakening actually is, and it was the tower. It was so funny, but so freaking true. So yeah, that's, that's really what you're going through right now, Divine Masculine, or at least that's what I'm picking up for you, or those of you that I'm channeling for. Um... I am feeling compelled to say that even though I, uh, this, a lot of the people that watch me are in separation, but you don't have to be in separation to get messages from this video, okay? This is for everybody. This is the whole Twin Flame Collective, whether you are in um, union or separation, semi-union, um, whatever. 
is a general reading for everybody. Yeah. All right, Divine Masculine. One more shuffle for you. Oh, oh. Okay, that wanted to come out. We've got the Page of Pentacles in reverse with this flyer. Judgment in reverse. All right. Um, resistance. Resistance. It is almost, it's, it's almost like, to a certain extent, Divine Masculine, you just don't want to grow up. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I mean, it's like, like you don't almost don't even want to wake up. Like you're, in some cases, you become complacent with where you are. And this call towards ascension, you just don't want to hear it. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know what to tell you there, bro. But at some point, you're just going to have to bite the bullet and accept it. Really. And then, I mean, it could go two ways for you. It really can. You can either go with the flow and it'll be much easier for you. Um, in like by not putting so much resistance into the situation, you can flow much easier with it. Or you can resist the whole way and be put through hell, basically. You know, like, it's up to you, boo. We could do this the easy way, or we could do this the hard way, says the universe. That's where your free will comes into play. All right, Divine Masculine. Last shuffle for you. Excellent. All right. Cut the deck. Okay. Divine Masculine, your energy is set. Divine Feminine, it's your turn on a, uh, immediately. Already, I'm seeing purple. So that divine wisdom is just flooding through you right now, divine feminine. Um, and you're really being charged. And the reason why you're getting all of this wisdom is because you're needing to lead, lead the way in some sense. And however that resonates for you. You're leading the way for the divine masculine in the spiritual sense, whereas the divine masculine is leading the way for you in the physical sense. I'm sorry if you didn't couldn't hear that, but I was saying... Um, the Divine Masculine is leading the way for you in the physical sense. You're leading the way for the Divine Masculine in the spiritual sense. And then also you are really helping to, um, you're helping others understand what's going on around them, what's going on in their lives, giving them ways to understand themselves better. I'm seeing pink now too. Divine Feminine, you are very much in a situation or a period of unconditional self-love. Like... Uh-oh, flyers. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, wow, Divine Feminine. So you've got Justice. You've got the Alchemist in reverse. You've got Strength. The Nine of Pentacles. And Death. So what I was just saying was you're in a very, you're very much in a place of unconditional love, like more unconditional love for yourself than I think you may have ever experienced or at least been aware of in your life. Um, you're standing very firm in your independence, standing very firm in your independence with the nine of pentacles here. Um, and there is a lot of transformation that is happening for you uh, with this death card. Now, specifically, with the death card, I'm seeing a death of many elements of this relationship within, you know, the Twin Flame Collective, between the Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine. And in this case, this is for the better. Like, this is death of toxic old situations or um, um, energies that have held the Divine Feminine back. And also held the Divine Masculine back, too, because in many cases, this situation was very much enabling the Divine Masculine to continue in whatever deceptive, narcissistic, um, codependent, whatever uh, energies were being exhibited. We have Justice, the Magician in Reverse, and Strength. The, what I'm getting here is the Divine Feminine is really gaining the strength to move on, 
to stop manifesting many of this ne the negative cycles that the Divine Feminine was plagued with. And justice is being served. Like, um, basically, Divine Feminine, you're getting, you're starting to reap what you've sown. Okay? All of the work that you've been doing recently, however long you've been consciously working on this path, is now starting to produce fruit. Whether that be good fruit or bad fruit. For the most part, I feel like it's good fruit. You know, especially because justice is upright here. Okay? But Divine Feminine, you're seriously standing in your power. Especially between the Nine of Pentacles and the Strength and Strength here. You're standing within your power and you're really in the process of manifesting. That's the most that's coming through with the Alchemist in Reverse. I'm picking up an energy of um, being very cautious, very careful about what you're manifesting. Not allowing people to tell you what you should or shouldn't do with your resources. I'm just, I, with the alchemist in reverse, I'm just getting a keen sense of discernment when it comes to what you attract in your life. And this is flanked by justice, just, justice talking about the things that you've learned over this process that are really, really feeding into your manifestations right now and actually could be causing you to reshape that which you're trying to manifest, which would put the alchemist in reverse here to a certain extent because you have a greater understanding. So now you you might be reworking a lot of your manifestations, a lot of the things you had been already working on manifesting. Strength here is awesome. I mean, the divine feminine really has taken a quantum leap when it comes to personal power. And the transformation that's happening with death here is really adding to that well, to that reservoir of strength that the Divine Feminine has been and will continue to be um, drawing from. Quite abundant. And it's really interesting. While I was meditating today, you see how the infinity symbol is on this card here? Um, while I was meditating today, I, you know, I would focus on raising my Kundalini and all that. Um, and... Normally, when I do it, I sway like back and forth. Today, I started moving in the infinities. Like my head started making the infinity sign. I started moving in a figure eight. It was so cool. Um, and so to me, while I was doing that, the message I was getting was abundance. Flowing with the abundance of the universe. So that's what's happening for the divine feminine right now. You're really going with the flow of the abundance of the universe. And that's absolutely being charged um, and, and accentuated by transformation here. Okay? Excellent. Excellent, Divine Feminine. I love it. I love it. Let me, uh, let me shuffle a little bit more here. And then we'll get into your cards. Okay, divine feminine. Divine feminine. All right, one more shuffle, divine feminine. Okay, let's cut the deck here. Cool. Overall energy, Divine Feminine, Queen of Cups, look at you, sitting pretty on your throne, knowing your emotional value, but holding on to your emotions. You really may not be expressing much right now. And for the most part, what I'm picking up here, especially with this Queen of Cups, is you are really focusing more on understanding, or maintaining, excuse me, maintaining your internal balance. You're not really focused on um, allowing too many people in on what's going on with you. 
And many, um, and for the most part, many of you are feeling that way because you are understanding just how much um, interference can come into play. You may be under the impression that there are people around you that you <laughs> that you can't trust as much as you might have thought, but that's okay. I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's just a deeper understanding of your external reality, which is allowing you. Oh yes, which is allowing you to maintain the balance within your internal reality. Look at this divine feminine, the tower in reverse. So you're definitely coming out of a tower moment and that is absolutely, absolutely helping reshape uh, your internal reality. There was a tower moment recently that really was an eye opener for you, but in a much better way. Okay. You've got the three of wands here. Again, this is talking about reaping what you've sown. You've been doing a shit ton of excellent work, Divine Feminine. And so now you're in the process of waiting for these ships to come in. Yeah, it's very good. Finally, ooh, 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 you've got the Two of Wands in reverse. No longer needing to debate or make a decision. Okay, you're past this, obviously, because now you've got, because you have the Three of Wands here. So you've made your decision. And I'm pretty sure that tower moment that we're, we were just talking about, that you just came out of, absolutely helped you make that decision. Absolutely helped you make that decision. It was the situation that you needed in order for things to be clear enough to say, okay, I'm going in this direction now. Excellent, Divine Feminine. In your current energies, in your timeline, we've, aha, look at that. There's strength again. <laughs> yeah, awesome, Divine Feminine. Coupled with, the Two of Swords. Now, wait a second. Now, wait a second. What's this stalemate, Divine Feminine? Okay. All right. So what I'm picking up here is this is the Divine Feminine having the strength to not make a move. It's like, it's like you're waiting something out. You're standing strong and you're standing firm in your beliefs in your knowledge of yourself, in your integrity also, in some cases. And you're having the strength not to speak up, not to say a word. The Queen of Cups, you're keeping, you're keeping to yourself. And this is absolutely an energy between you and your Divine Masculine in the physical realm. And this is definitely something that has been inspired by this last eclipse because you see the, the the moon up here on this two of swords i'm really picking up an energy of a, a, a stalemate between you and your divine masculine but the divine feminine is not budging why because she's got all this inner strength and knowledge and knowing behind her this is one of the rare times the rare times i actually um am okay with seeing the two of swords here because at this moment, this is necessary for the Divine Feminine right now. And it has everything to do with this tower moment that she just came out of. Okay? Moving forward, current energies. You have the Three of Cups in reverse with the Page of Cups. Okay, so this is an energy of Maybe not wanting reconciliation, not wanting a celebration, releasing the hold that some sort of third party situation had on her and moving forward with something new. Looking for emotional fulfillment in a new sense. There could be some divine feminines out there that are thinking about going, uh, thinking about dating someone else, getting yourself out there, finding someone new to connect with instead of keeping herself in this state of limbo, really. And that absolutely could be what this tower moment was. Something could have happened around this last full moon, this last eclipse, that was a major tower moment that, that turned into a major shift for the Divine Feminine in which she stepped further into her emotional power, into her understanding about herself and really what she's worth. And that's definitely what this Page of Cups is saying, or at least the princess in this deck. Um, getting to understand yourself better. 
You see how this per this page is staring into the cup at that fish in there. To me, this is understanding yourself more, learning about yourself more, and not needing the validation of the outside influences of social people, whatever. Not needing that validation. Not needing that praise, that recognition. Not needing to be told by people outside of you that everything is okay, that you're not crazy, whatever. No. No. Absolutely not. The Queen of Cups, upright, knows she's not crazy. Knows that she's psychic. She's very in tune. She's very in tune with herself. And she's more in, and she's very in tune with the people, uh, experiences, situations, energies around her. She probably knows more about what's going on with you than you do. This Queen of Cups. But that doesn't mean she's going to let you know about it. Doesn't mean that she's going to act on it, even. Unless it's absolutely necessary. And even still, I'm still picking up some sort of flippant energy from it. Be like, eh, well, I could help, but you don't want to listen, so that's your problem. Not mine. <laughs> All of this is absolutely lending to this current energy of Two of Swords and the Strike upright. Both upright. And again, this is one of the only time, one of the very rare times that I actually appreciate seeing the Two of Swords here. That I actually appreciate someone holding on to or um, maintaining, remaining in some sort of stalemate. Because at this point, the Divine Feminine has really nothing else to say or do about the situation. All has been made quite clear. And if you don't get it by now, again, the Queen of Cups says, that's your problem, not mine. <laughs> All right, cool. Current challenge, Divine Feminine. We have the Ten of Swords in reverse. Ooh, okay. I want to get this second card before I say anything. Ten of Swords in reverse coupled with the Eight of Swords. Okay. Your current challenge right now, Divine Feminine, is releasing yourself. I'm picking up an energy of some of... Some in the Divine Feminine Collective might be stuck in this Ten of Swords energy, replaying things that happened in the past in their heads, which would be this like mental prison. You're in the process or you're trying to release or come out, finish, end out this, this cycle, this Ten of Swords situation, but it's reversed here, which is saying it's blocked. And it's blocked because some Divine Feminines, you're still in your head about things. I mean, I can resonate with that. There are still some situations that keep popping into my head and it's like, I haven't thought about that in the longest time. I'm even still feeling some residual energy from this tower moment that happened. Yeah, I went through a tower moment too, right around the full moon. There's a lot of a lot of what's happening for the divine feminine right now. I feel like if you're have if you're really having trouble with this ten of swords situation, it's because there's still a lot of resentment, and you might be cycling around and around and around, still experiencing this resentment, which is keeping you in this mental prison. But you just have to let it go, and you have to choose compassion. You have to understand that, yes, some shitty things may have happened. Um, and don't get me wrong, Divine Feminine, you could have been the one doing some of the shitty things too. Okay? But ultimately, yeah, shit went down. It wasn't the best. It wasn't ideal. It wasn't um, desirable. But it all served to teach a lesson. Okay? Nobody is perfect, but nobody is completely evil either. So when you have compassion for those in the situation that you feel you have been done wrong by, you then also have compassion for yourself because we're all connected. We're all one, okay? I, I mean, check it out. Divine Feminine, I get it. I get it. I had a conversation with myself just a few days ago talking about how I needed to be more compassionate and just like rolling my eyes at myself. And it's like, no, Eric, don't roll your eyes at me. Other people have are facing their own challenges too, okay? Okay, yeah, I get it. So focusing less on resentment, maybe even martyrdom, 
and more on compassion will help you break out of this mental prison and finally release this Ten of Swords. Okay? Sweet. Uh, upcoming energies for you, Divine Feminine, we have Three of Pentacles. This could be self-mastery. This also could be starting something new with someone, starting to build something with someone, yes? Partnership, something like a business, something, something, something like that. <laughs> Three of Pentacles coupled with. Woo, there you go. Five of Swords in reverse. I like that, Divine Feminine. Letting go of resentment is what I heard. Letting go of resentment, letting go of, of fear, of combative energies, of self-destructive energies, of, comp of competitive energies, and focusing on building. This could be with your Divine Masculine. This could be with someone new. But the name of the game here is building, creating, teamwork, working together. And this could definitely be the masculine and feminine energies within you, yourself, working together. Like dropping, dropping the drama with the Five of Swords in reverse and really starting to get work together to rebuild. I love that, Divine Feminine. That's really freaking awesome. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. All right, let's get into the Divine Masculine now. Overall energy for you, Divine Masculine, we've got, hey, hey now, we've got some mirroring already, the Magician. Now, the mirroring here is that the Magician came out for the Divine Feminine. The Divine Feminine, it came out in the reverse because her manifestations were being redefined in many cases. For the Divine Masculine, it's upright here because you're actively, you're seriously working on manifesting, okay? The Magician is coupled with the Knight of Pentacles in reverse, the Eight of Pentacles in reverse, and the Lovers. Okay. So you've got the Magician here, we know that. The Knight of Pentacles, or in this deck, the Prince of Pentacles, and the Eight of Pentacles, both of these are in reverse. But I don't, what I'm getting here for these two cards is in some cases the Divine Masculine is putting a stop towards manifesting what, or manifesting and working towards something that they were really, I want to say gung-ho about in the past. And... Okay, and with the, the Magician here upright, also the Lovers upright, something new is being manifested here. And this is something that's in much more alignment with the Divine Masculine himself, herself, whatever. This is energy, not gender. The Lovers here, yes, it talks about a deep soulmate relationship, but it also often talks about a choice. And when I see this card in relation to a choice, a lot of the time it's a choice between yourself and someone else, a choice between vice and virtue. And here in this situation, vice would be working towards all these other things that everyone else wanted the Divine Masculine to work towards. Not the things that, yeah, the Divine Masculine might have wanted to a certain extent, but maybe not in the way that he was going about it. Maybe not in the way that, you know, the people around them wanted them to. And that's what I'm getting here for the Divine Masculine in this situation. The Divine Masculine is now choosing to, to, to manifest something that is much more suited, uh, much better suited to the Divine Masculine on a personal fulfillment level. Okay? Now, this could be manifesting things to help bring him and the Divine Feminine closer together. I am, I, especially with the lovers here, I am feeling like what this manifestation is is much more in alignment with the, the, the twin flame situation. And that automatically would, <clears throat> would um, mean situations between the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine. Okay? Cool. Current energies for you, Divine Masculine. We have... Strength in reverse. Hello, mirroring. Right underneath the Divine Feminine's strength. 
which is upright. Coupled with the Nine of Swords in reverse. Unfortunately, this is not something that I'm feeling you are coming out of, Divine Masculine. I feel like you are just perpetually stuck in this Nine of Swords energy and the strength um, in reverse. Strength in reverse here is talking about fear, lack of self-confidence, I just heard very clearly. All because of anxiety. I feel like you are almost afraid of yourself, in a sense, because of some of the things that may have gone down in the past. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's really all I'm getting with that one. You have to let this go. You have to let it go. Just like the Divine Feminine needs to let go of the resentment, and I'm pretty sure, Divine Masculine, you're feeling this. Which could be, you could be feeling the, the, the resentment and the anger and the... the des In some cases, the Divine Feminine doesn't, maybe not, doesn't even want to know you anymore. Which is unfortunate. Yes, it sucks. And yes, you can feel that. So Divine Feminine, you have to take some responsibility here too, Okay. It's not all your fault, no, and the Divine Masculine has his own responsibility when it comes to, you know, getting out of anxiety, but we are mirroring each other here, guys. Look at this. I mean, look at this. The Divine Feminine has strength, upright, and the Two of Swords, and upright, and I was saying that Two of Swords is the one time, one of the rare occasions that I don't mind seeing it there. And so now the Divine Masculine has strength in reverse with the Nine of Swords in reverse. Like he's, he, while the Divine Feminine is standing in her power and standing strong and not really not taking any shit, the Divine Masculine is in the exact opposite, is mirroring her in the fact that he's afraid that he'll never be able to step up to, to make things better. Um, he's anxious about it. Doesn't feel like he can do it. Doesn't feel like he's adequate enough. And we don't have to feel like this, guys. We can work on forgiving each other for the things that have happened. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It's got, probably going to be a bit of a challenge in a lot of cases. But it's possible, okay? All right. Second set of current energies for you, Divine Masculine, we have the Nine of Wands. All right, cool. So it's not like you really want to give up. You're definitely the wounded warrior here. Wow, and it's funny, I just realized there's more mirroring with the tower because when I was channeling for the Divine Masculine and shuffling the deck, I saw the tower in, their, in his deck. Talking about how he's just been getting blow by blow, one after another. And that's, and the Nine of Wands here just reminded me of that. Because the Divine Masculine right now is definitely the Wounded Warrior. Just probably struggling along to keep his head afloat, to keep his head above water. Nine of Wands is coupled with the Devil. The Divine Masculine is just perpetually fighting the devil. Now, keep in mind, we do have a nine here. So, I'm picking up that you're almost, you're almost there, Divine Masculine. Don't give up. You just got to keep going. Now, at the same time, this is also, I'm picking up some energies of staying in the space that you're in attached to this devil energy, these addictions, this codependency, whatever this is for you, and not making a change, just staying defensive about it, just just keeping on, keep going on and on and on in this stage, space, instead of changing anything. Even though in your overall energy here, now, okay, well, I'm starting to see more in the overall energy now. 
stagnancy with the page of, well, I'm sorry, with the Prince of Pentacles in reverse. And the Eight of Pentacles in reverse, while, yes, I, originally I was seeing the Knight of Pentacles in reverse and the Eight of Pentacles in reverse as not working towards the same old things and with the Magician upright and the Lovers upright choosing a new direction. In some cases, for some Divine Masculines, <clears throat> you are, in fact, still just doing the same old thing. Especially when it comes to the Nine of Wands and the Devil here. Many of you are afraid to even try something new because of this situation right here with Strength in Reverse and the Nine of Swords in Reverse. So you're going to stay in your comfort zone. But your comfort zone has the Devil all snuggled up in there with you. Oof. That's a key. Okay, this is a general reading, guys, so keep in mind that there are many different scenarios that I'm picking up on. Okay, current challenge, Divine Masculine, <clears throat> the Queen of Cups in reverse, more mirroring. Whereas the Divine Feminine has it upright, now the Divine Masculine has it in reverse. Your current challenge, Divine Masculine, is keeping your emotions in check because you are all up in your feelings with the Nine of Cups in reverse. Very much all up in your feelings, probably drowning your sorrows, just to cope. But this is also, you're up in your feelings because of a denial in wish fulfillment. And you might be saying, well, who's denying me this wish fulfillment? You are, by your choices. But you know who else? Your best buddy here, the devil. Divine Masculine's bestie, huh? That's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. It's scary, too. Like, that scares me. I don't like that. I don't want the devil to be my bestie. Ew. <laughs> so your current challenge, Divine Masculine, is overcoming your emotions when it comes to this loss, or this perceived loss in wish fulfillment. Getting a hold of your emotions and not just drowning them away. Being able to handle your emotions. Okay, finally, upcoming energies for you, Divine Masculine. We have the Six of Pentacles in reverse. This is interesting. You could be learning a lesson in imbalance between give and take. Or you could be... Like I originally was picking up on in the beginning of the reading, you could just be choosing to not give to certain situations anymore with the Six of Pentacles in reverse. Coupled with the Seven of Pentacles upright. And this is really not giving anymore because you've under because you're starting to understanding, you're starting to understand the principle of you reap what you sow. And so you don't want to sow these seeds anymore because you don't want to reap this harvest, this type of harvest anymore. Well, that's a good thing, Divine Masculine. I mean, that has everything to do with this devil energy here. This has everything to do with fighting back against the devil. Just keep going because you're almost there. Yeah? Excellent. I actually like how that's ending for you, Divine Masculine, and for the Divine Feminine. That's really good. Really, really good. Okay. Alrighty. So let's get into the Animal Spirit deck here. And... Yeah. And I also, I do want to end with Oracle Guidance from the Lightworker Oracle. All right. For the Divine Masculine. Divine Masculine. 
Divine and Masculine. This one, this one. Beaver. Okay. Divine Feminine. Divine Feminine. Nope. Divine Feminine is this one. Bear. Excellent. Divine, uh, uh, sorry. Um, shadow Dynamic of the Relationship. Shadow Dynamic of the Relationship. Shadow Dynamic. Shadow. Shadow Dynamic. Firefly. And the Illuminated Dynamic. There we go. Oh. Owl. And Stingray. Okay, so we got two this week. I'm glad Owl finally came out. Actually, I was wondering when that was going to happen. All right, so for the Divine Masculine, we got Beaver. Beaver. Hard worker, loyal, tireless, family first. The Beaver personality is a welcomed sight. These good-natured and dependable creatures have infinite love and enthusiasm for family and express it by way of the earth element, providing a home and financial stability. Although a beaver doesn't usually initiate a project, once started, they'll work steadily for weeks, months, or years to see it through. The beaver card appears when the task at hand requires your long-term steady effort. It can also signify that it's time for some karma yoga or selfless service. When in balance, be Beaver is happy and does meaningful work. When out of balance, Beaver feels useless and worn out. To bring into balance, one must do some physical labor or some selfless service. So this is definitely an energy I was picking up on, um, you know, when it comes to choosing a new avenue for the Divine Masculine to move in. That is more in alignment with themselves, who they truly are. Um, and it would definitely be family-oriented, which is another energy I was picking up with the lovers. Okay, Divine Feminine, you've got Bear. Which is another card that speaks of family to me. Where are you, Bear? There you are. Walk, waking from spiritual slumber, beginning anew. After a long winter, the bear arises from deep slumber. At first, the movement and effort are difficult, but the bear knows it's time to awaken and move, move toward the dawning light. The bear card appear, uh, represents an individual on the cusp of new directions and personal transformation. The initial weeks and months of this spiritual quest may feel tricky, cumbersome, and full of obstacles, but you have no choice, bear. Winter wanes, the warmth of spring emerges, and your transformation begins. When in balance, Bear has inner strength and a yearning to grow. When out of balance, Bear is withdrawn, lith uh, experience lith lith lethargy and heaviness. To bring into balance, one must do some movement or exercise. So yeah, that makes perfect sense, guys. I mean, the Divine Feminine is coming out of that tower moment. Um, she's definitely standing in her power, understanding herself better. So that's good. All right. The shadow dynamic is Firefly. Firefly. Inspired and fantastic, yet fleeting. The Firefly contains the light of a thousand stars. It's pure, radiant, and illuminating. This high-frequency charge cannot be sustained for long. Therefore, the Firefly card indicates a moment of inspiration or awakening that quickly fades if we do not catch it. There is Firefly energy behind every poem, song, and invention. Our job is to be ready to harness this creative spirit when it graces our path. What can you do to support this precious and elusive light? When in balance... Firefly writes, creates, and brainstorms. When out of balance, Firefly burns out or feels dull. 
To bring into balance, one must write a poem or draw. So there could be some inspiration that's coming in for you guys. Uh, uh, coming up. So I would recommend, you know, preparing yourselves for that. Write them down. Record a message, you know. Write down your thoughts and ideas so that you can maintain them and follow through with them. Okay, and for the illuminated dynamic, we got two. We got owl and we got stingray. So here's owl. Oops. Owl. Abundance. Clairvoyant. Treasures. The owl is a mysterious and otherworldly creature found in folklore from east to west. The white owl in this particular deck is the companion of the goddess Lakshmi and represents wealth, beauty, and good fortune. When the owl card appears, it's an omen that a boon or treasure is on the way, either in spiritual or material form. With owl wisdom on your side, you'll, quote, see and, quote, know exactly what to do with this boon. How can it further serve your dharma and bring abundance to the world? Trust that the wellspring of treasures is infinite. Now, this could be have everything to do with the inspiration coming through with the firefly. That could be that boon or treasure that is coming through for you, for you guys. Yeah? When in balance, Owl is generous, trusting, and secure. When out of balance, uh, Owl experiences money quarrels and scarcity. To bring into balance, one must make an offering. Okay. And finally, we have Stingray as part of the illuminated dynamic. And to me, there's definitely a message of um, balance, Ch chakra balance, energy balance here. Yeah. Because of the spine of the stingray, which is illuminated here with the colors of the chakra system. So greater balance is coming into play. This is good. And this is for both Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine, okay? Stingray, developing confidence, self of self, I'm sorry, sense of self or spine. The Stingray card represents a pivotal point in personal growth. That the moment has come when the Stingray must decide between the old, easy, comfortable, and familiar, and the new, challenging, uncomfortable, and unfamiliar. That sounds exactly like what I was saying for the Divine Masculine. And actually, that can absolutely be tra translated into the Divine Feminine, too. Divine Feminine is coming out of a tower moment. Divine Masculine is being faced with stepping out of his comfort zone. Pressure from family and friends makes the decision even more complicated. Jeez. <laughs> no matter what decision, I'm sorry, no matter what choice is made now, it's inevitable that this dilemma will surface again and again as the force of Dharma growing within the Stingray is too strong to ignore. So that means, just like I was saying, Divine Masculine, you can go with the flow, or you can resist. You can make it harder on yourself, or you make you can make it easy for yourself. But thinking that you can just stay in your comfort zone and never have to deal with this and eventually it'll just go away is deluding yourself. It's just going to keep coming back again and again and again until you deal with it. And again, you can either have a tower moment and have the universe deal with it for you, or you can do it yourself. Okay. When in balance, Stingray is eager and wants to grow. When out of balance, uh, Stingray blames others and quits. To bring into balance, one must move through the discomfort. Yes, indeed. All right. Finally, to close out the reading, I want to get one card of Oracle Guidance for the Twin Flame Collective in relation to this reading from the Lightworker Oracle. One card to Spirit for the Divine Twin Flames. Okay, we've got card number 43, Sixth Ray of Devotion. This does boil down to a seven. All right. 
43. Sixth Ray of Devotion. The sixth ray of devotion bestows the qualities of persistence, unwavering focus, and intensity of feeling. It is a gift of the strength to move mountains with your will for what you love. When the sixth ray of devotion appears, you are being given a guidance that even if you do not seem to have much worldly power right now, the power of your beliefs can conquer obstacles. The Archangel Uriel helps Uriel, excuse me, helps you receive the blessing of the sixth ray. Now, I thought this card came out before. I can't remember. It was, I don't think it was last week. No, it wasn't. It was the week before, I believe. But I'm going to read this again because it's an important message. You are receiving a blessing of the sixth ray of devotion. It is serving your soul growth and will help you develop faith in your principles and trust in the power of your beliefs. You will be able to recognize and appreciate the extraordinary strength within you and realize that you have enough willpower to keep working towards your dream, overcoming any obstacle, until you are divinely successful. The sixth ray reminds you of the power of love, which can conquer anything and everything. Love is an empowering, motivating force far stronger than fear. Love is the foundation of authentic spiritual devotion. Devotion to the divine empowers us to bear burdens, overcome obstacles, and manifest all manner of beautiful visions in the world that may, that may, uh, I'm sorry, that may at first assure us that our dream is not possible. The sixth ray blesses you with spiritual stubbornness and sacred rebellion against any odds. The challenge with the sixth ray is to not become so anchored in your beliefs that you are fanatical, judging others because of their beliefs, because their beliefs are different. You can be unwavering in your adherence to your belief system and yet honor the fact that there are as many paths to divine union as there are people, that the ways the universe calls you home to love are unlimited. If you do not honor this, you may try to pull people from their own path, which can create unnecessary struggle for them and unnecessary karma for you. The best way to honor the blessing and minimize the challenge of this ray is to share your truth with an open heart and an open mind. Share without agenda. For those working with this energy, the power of mind and emotions will come into focus. You may need to channel your emotion and mental power into worthy projects or practice balancing your intensity with lightness of heart and playfulness so you don't become harsh or despairing if things appear not to be working out the way you believe they should. Then your faith can remind you love always finds a way. When Archangel Uriel connects with you and a tremendous power, the power of earth, is brought to your aid. Uriel brings healing energy and an ability to cause real effect in the physical world with your mental and emotional power. Remember, you are here to shine your light. Others can choose to use your light to see by until they are ready to discover their own inner light or not. It is not anything you need to worry about. Simply live your truth, trust in your heartfelt beliefs, and devote yourself to love. Finally, the sixth ray has special connection to religion and love. You are asked to hold the healing power of love in your heart for all those who are evolving through a life experience involving religious practice. This can help counterbalance the judgment and fear that exists in the hearts of many towards religions that are not their own or not or that have been the vehicle through which abuse has taken uh, abuse has taken place. Religion on this planet at this time needs love, support, and encouragement to evolve, heal, and grow in whatever way ultimately serves the divine. And the last time when this card came out, I was saying, yes, that is something I have always said, that I believe religion is a stepping stone. It, is, it has a very important part in humanity, in the, in the evolution of humanity, especially the spiritual evolution of humanity. I see it as a stepping stone. So in essence, you start with a religion, you go through some lifetimes with that one, you may go through some other lifetimes in other religions, just gaining knowledge, gaining wisdom, gaining understanding until eventually you can step out on your own and walk your own spiritual path. Because there are just as many paths to union, source, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it. There are as many paths to, to God, to union, as there are people. Okay, excellent. So I'm glad that came out again. Because that actually, is, I feel like, is a very, very good message. All right, guys. There it is.
Thank you so much for joining me. Please make sure to check out the spiritual mission check-ins, Ascension versus Mission. Yeah? Um, I hope you enjoy those. And I, I hope you guys have a great week. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next conversation. Yeah? Take care. Mwah. Bye.